There are pockets of areas around the world that possess higher levels of strange activity above the normal. Most people wouldn't even know that they have driven into these peculiar regions, or even be aware they live in these heightened areas, or indeed the effects it can have on us if we do. During the colourful years of the 1990s, the human race scurried across the surface of this planet with the soon approaching discord on the global arena and the promise of Y2K, a programme which would cripple the entire computing world on anything that contained an electronic chip. Needless to say, we sailed across the proverbial ocean of the aforementioned discord, powered by the consistent level on the threat warning scale of Orange Alert. And as for the promises the Y2K conspiracy theorists threatened, it actually offered no resistance to our forward motion, no more than a bank of mist on the surface of an ocean. Our attention has continually since then been directed away from the unfolding situation at the former Sherman Ranch in the Uinta Basin. In short, Jim Sherman bought the ranch, and from day one the family were plagued by the appearance of various strange creatures that clearly didn't belong in this world, including, remarkably, colourful birds not of this planet. It may be worthy to note that the Sherman name is also associated with another paranormal hotspot, this time in Harrisville in Rhode Island on the east coast of the United States. This location was made famous by Ed and Lorraine Warren. The subsequent movie deal was loosely based on the phenomena reported at the site and was known as The Conjuring. Word began to leak onto the internet, and within months, the ranch became a sensation for all those who thought they could literally shoot the phenomena into oblivion. There were also the endless visits by extreme fringe belief systems, all assuming they could communicate with the entities which, by now, were believed to have come from multiple star systems. Eventually, the ranch got a new owner, who had plans himself to isolate the phenomena, to understand it and see the bigger picture, a picture he was going to protect. Since taking possession of the ranch, a high level of security, allegedly under the CIA payroll, was employed to keep the nosy humans from the gates and surrounding property lines at extreme cost and maximum force. Some experts and trusted parties were allowed on the former Sherman Ranch to investigate and research in an attempt to get to the bottom of the phenomena. But to what end? Compulsory non-disclosure agreements were signed, so ultimately questions arose from the secrecy. What was going on at the ranch that caused extremely wealthy private citizens and governments to invest heavily into it? An agenda that attempted to draw information through this location which we, the dumb public, were not allowed to know. The last time I checked, we all lived on the same planet. When I visited the ranch in October 2019, I could see the ranch was simply a focal point for those attempting to create a controlled zone. The ranch has subsequently been sold again, although a new reality TV show has begun airing and is filmed at the ranch. This time, research on the property takes a more scientific approach in an attempt to better understand the phenomena and entertain viewers with the mysteries this small area has to offer. However, the previous owner allegedly said that the activity had died off. The area surrounding the ranch was of greater interest to me. In particular, an area that sits under the ranch and greater Uinta Basin and retains a positively charged magnetic anomaly spanning 42 miles at its longest point northwest to southeast, encompassing the towns of Roosevelt and Bluebell. The small town of Duchesne, although on the weaker outer edges of the anomaly to the west, is within six miles of its main strength, which lies east along the I-40, where the anomaly is at its strongest, stretching for 28 miles as the crow flies. Within some of these anomalies, we tend to see a greater amount of paranormal phenomena, such as strange cryptid creatures of all sorts, both on four legs and on two, which includes Bigfoot disembodied voices, animal and human mutilations, crop circles in their truest sense, strange disappearances and, of course, not forgetting the UFO phenomena, which all connect through a distinct conscious connection with the observer. 
the planet is covered with these areas of high interest. The smaller, naturally occurring positive anomalies appear in greater numbers in the Northern Hemisphere, whereas the larger anomalies appear in the Southern Hemisphere. One of the largest of these can be found in the northern border to the Central African Republic, which measures over 400 miles at its widest point. During my time in the Uinta Basin, I met some amazing people, each of them hoping to learn as much as they could while battling with disinformation and land boundaries protected by security personnel carrying weapons. I had the opportunity to film not only the lights on the ridge behind the now infamous ranch known for skinwalkers, but others around it, which appeared and disappeared. The stark realisation became clear that the light activity was happening around the ranch and not on it. On my travels around the world, I have come to depend on my instinct a lot and understanding elements and voices left behind by our ancestors. This is by no means a new phenomenon. It is actually very ancient. Observing the landscape from the southern viewpoint, I studied the geography of the land before me, the river, the grass, the trees and rocks that ascend high into the air behind the ranch. There was a strange sense of practice being performed in the area. Now, when I say practice, I mean ritual practice. Magic, for want of a better term, but not satanic, as it has a very different signature, and this is not the case here. I was aware time was against me, as I had a lot of ground to cover, and I was constantly reminded of my location by the sounds of the security personnel's arduent use of weapons and wrench. Time and time again, I reminded myself that this form of protection was of no use, as previously, chunks of flesh were blasted from the creatures, and they kept on walking on scale. It is a pointless exercise, and would only be productive for the collection of samples. Otherwise, they would have to make a few alterations to bring them down for good, which I will not discuss now. There are other key areas that exist around the world, which also present a similar or identical phenomena. And it has been confirmed that the U.S. government is interested in seven other locations around the United States. Whilst on the high ridge opposite my vantage point, the new ranch owner and a group of his business associates were posing for a picture, unaware of another object passing behind them. The ridge, in particular, held a great fascination for me, along with other areas around the Uinta Basin. My instinct was screaming that there was a distinct connection between the stars and the phenomena that totally ignored the Ute and the Navajo shapeshifter story, which in itself was nothing more than a distraction I found. The puzzling secret to this place led not just hundreds, but thousands of years back, and to another continent. On the ground, this made no sense. Why was there a greater emphasis being placed on the stars and the rocks? It felt like there should have been engravings on the rocks that stretched back centuries. My attention was brought to a star system called the Lupus constellation. It was recognized in ancient times and even appears in the oldest temple in the world known as Gobegli Tepe, near the southern Turkish border next to Syria. 16,000 years ago, the ancients carved this constellation into one of their great stones. However, the name Lupus was a relatively new addition, delivered by Ptolemy in the 2nd century BC, signifying it with the wolf. It puzzled me how this possible connection to the local area could have been formed, and it seems I was not the only one making that connection to a pre-native culture. When the ranch was being sponsored by government money, $22 million of it, in fact. An Egyptian archaeologist was on site and part of the investigating team. Now, all this may seem natural and conveniently coincidental, but if we remove the ranch and all of its strange happenings from the equation, we are left with a very strange question. What on earth was an Egyptian archaeologist doing researching on American soil?